All right, folks, welcome back. And just between me and you, this is gonna be one of my favorite videos. Why? Because it is shopping time. It is shopping time for my body. We are gonna be getting the stealth suit and the bone suit. Booyah. All right, so just to kind of show you what we're dealing with here, you know, you'll see all these suit items, 5,000 rupees each, that is just insanity. Nobody has, you know, 30,000 rupees to spend on suits. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and talk to her, go through all her dialogue options, but she'll kind of allude to the fact that I think her grandma is sick or someone's grandma, the village grandma. So uh, in order for us to get those suit items back down to a more reasonable price tag, we're gonna have to go up here we're gonna have to cook a meal for this woman. So now, to get the side quest going, go ahead and give her a quick talking to. Whoops. Ask her what's wrong. Ask her about porridge, and I think that'll do it. And that should get a side quest fired up for you. So now this porridge, guys, the recipe for this bad boy, it's going to be three items. You need a Sunday lion. You're gonna need rice. Whoops. And you're gonna need milk. So now the milk is for sale at Hotno, that's why I went there first. The rice is also for sale at Hotno, but you can also just kind of go around and chop grass uh, and get it for free at some point. You know, eventually it'll it'll drop that rice for you. And then the Sunday Lions guys, they're on literally every Sky Island that there is, except for the Great Sky Island. But just in case, you know, you don't have towers yet or you don't have access to the Great Sky Island or, excuse me, any Sky Island, I'll show you guys where there's one on the ground level and it's relatively close and easy to get to. It's right by Lookout Landing. Okay, so as you can see, I cooked the meal. Uh, I talked to that woman again, and we got some little cutscene stuff going on. So, long story short, once all this is all done, we can then go back and go shopping. Now the stealth suit's going to be about 1800 rupees, the bone suit's going to be about 2400 rupees. So what is that, 24, 34, 44, about 4200 rupees altogether. But I'm going to take about 400 rupees on top of that in order for me to be able, be able to upgrade those to the second level. Okay, so as you can see, all the prices are now more reasonable. But again, I need about 5000 rupees altogether. So just go ahead and say you want to sell. Now this is why I've taken the time, guys, to get every gemstone node that you've ever seen me walk past. And if I didn't do it on video, you better believe I went back and did it off video. All right, so I've got two. I'm selling all of my diamonds there. That gives me a good head start on uh, cash flow. Every single amber that I own, those are all gone. Again, giving me a real good head start. giving me a real good head start here toward my goal. Now you need, let's see here, 45 I think it is luminous stones. Now I've got way over that, but I don't wanna sell these if I can avoid it. But what I am gonna sell is all of my opal. Okay, we're getting close guys. So from here, then I'll just kinda of bite the bullet and see what I have in this department. The most of what I have is rubies. So I'll probably try three of those, see where that lands me on my count. Okay, I'll do three more in that case. Okay, that gets me right around that 5,000 rupee mark. Okay, so now it's time to go shopping. Now, as soon as you start buying clothes here, you're going to get some fabric, which is, you know, cool. It's just kind of like an added bonus here. It's not really what I came here for, but it's a freebie. Might as well take it. Okay, so now we're gonna need, oh yeah, I meant to show you guys on the map about that recipe there and they got sidetracked. You, you can't tell I'm excited, I'm sure. Whoops. Get out of my way, I just want the mask. Oh yeah, baby. You are mine. I've been talking about these for far too long, guys. All right, so that's all the sets now that I want to upgrade. I got the Barbarian, I got the Bone Suit, and I've got Stealth. So just to show you where that Sunday Lion is, so here's Lookout Landing. Am I saying that right? Haha, <laughs> look at me go. Okay, so Lookout Landing. Uh, south of that, there's a shrine with a chasm there. And then right by that is Ranch Ruins. And if you keep going 
in this direction from Ranch Ruins. That little darkened spot right there. There's a couple of bobkins right there, but there's also a Sunday lane growing on the ground right by that sky chunk. So that's a good, quick, easy Sunday lane you can get to if you're in need. All right, guys, but for right now, I'm going straight to the Great Fairy Fountain. All right, guys, it doesn't matter which one you use. As long as you've got at least two of them unlocked, you are right as rain. So you guys already know the three suits I'm going right after here, and that's going to be the Barbarian, as well as we, 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 we quail. The wing, you asko, you wabbit. That's going to require jeepers. You call it require. Hey, Alexa, how do you pronounce require? So basically, she just said I can pronounce it however I want. So it's going to be a requirement of nine Mighty Thistles altogether for that Barbarian Armor. And then... We don't have the Lionel parts anyway, but honestly, I'm not in a hurry for that at the moment. I just want to get it up. You know, it kind of helps a little bit with defense at least. Take just a little bit less heart damage than you otherwise would. And I really only use those in lower threat situations anyway. If it's a high threat situation, I always eat the attack power meal instead. So here's where it starts getting expensive, guys. When we start getting things to the second level, you can see the rupees are really going to start ticking down here when they start costing 50 for each item at that point. Okay, so this is going to be all about that base. All about that base. It's going to be all about those silent, whatever they're called. Uh, uh, mm? Blue Nightshade, that's mm. it. Mm. So that's not terrible. It only, you know, takes nine, kind of like the Mighty Thistles for the other one. But at the next level, that's when they start getting more expensive. Uh, mm? Okay, so mm. it's going to start costing five each, and Sunset mm. Fireflies also. That's why you guys have watched me my entire walkthrough kind of slow down, take a moment to scoop those fireflies up as I can. So if you guys are wondering where to find these materials, I'll show you on the map here when I'm done doing all this, you know, pushing button stuff. But um, long story short, I got the Mighty Thistles from Lake Floria, as well as like a lot of the Luminous Stones. And again, I'll show you that on the map here shortly. But um, I got most of the blue flowers, the silent nightshades or whatever they're called. Um, right, whoop, don't do that. Right there in Kakriko Village. And I'll show you guys a couple other places that they're, they're lurking. But the main problem was those luminous stones. So I'll really have to do a good map overview and kind of show you all where you can go for these materials. All right, Bone Soup, baby. I am ready. I absolutely love this thing, guys. It is probably, without exaggerating or no joke, it's probably the fav my favorite feature of Tears of the Kingdom. And probably it was the same in Breath of the Wild as well. That bone attack up with the bone weapons, the attack power meal, it's, it's where it's at. I absolutely had a ball with that in both games. My only complaint is here in the Tears of the Kingdom, it's a bit tougher. In Breath of the Wild, you know, those Dragon Bone Moblin colors were everywhere. And I knew where to go get real easy and quick ones right off the Great Plateau. In this game, it's just kind of backwards. You have to really work hard for the bone stuff that will pair with those um, damage bonuses. Uh, Stalnox horns, Gibdo bones, although those break, so you can't attach those to weapons, but Stalnox horns you can. Uh, Mugdula jaws, Mugdula, and the spiny bones that you'll see kind of laying loosely around on the ground. I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to upgrade this. Let's see how far I can go with this first. 
So yeah, you can't pick those spiny bone things up and put them in your inventory, but when you do see them laying on the ground, you can fuse those to weapons. And folks, whatever you fuse those to is going to get like a stacking damage bonus. So let's say the, the weapon base damage is 20. Let's say the spiny bone is only 7. Okay, you might think, well, that's just a crappy tipper. It's only 7. Yes and no. So that 7 is going to add to the 20. So now you have a total of 27. And you can go ahead and triple that 27 for bone attack up and attack power meal on top of it. So that 27 becomes, you know, 25, 50, 75, almost 80, give or take, uh, attack damage. So, you know, even though the spiny bones in and of themselves aren't great, depending on what you attach it to, it could be a pretty doggone good weapon. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and... I need to get this out of my system. <sighs> All right, and while I got you here, I'm going to take a moment to show you exactly why... This is so important. So this weapon here is at its last swing. So I know the number doesn't show it, but that weapon right now is pushing, when I swing it, it's going to push 224 base damage. That's just the weapon because it's breaking. Now remember, when your mount is not a Lionel, there is no weapon breakage, but you'll still get that 224 damage output every time you swing while you're mounted. Again, make sure you're mounted, otherwise it will break. So let's show you guys here exactly. Now the Black Moblin Whore normally doesn't push 48 by itself. That's doubled because the weapon's about to break. That's normally pushing 24 by itself. But I'm going to go ahead and destroy that material. And I'm going to show you guys what happens here. Okay, so 122. So it's not a big difference, right? Hold that thought. So that 122 is 244. So it's already more. But um, here's where the real kicker comes in. And again, this is not going to show on the number, folks. But this bone uh, proficiency, you know, bone weapon proficiency, whatever it's called, that almost doubles that attack power by itself. So that 244 is now 488. Now it's not exactly 488, it's a little shy of that. It's actually an 80% bump. So you know, whatever that math is, just in my mind, you know, for easy math, I just double it. So it's upward <laughs> of around, you know, that 488, probably 440 or something like that. So it's pretty freaking insane, right? Okay, but we're not done yet. You eat an attack power meal on top of that? Whoa, doggy. That's where it really starts getting insane. So you eat that attack power meal on top of that, you add 50% to that stacked amount. So essentially what we're doing every single time we swing this weapon on the back of a Lionel, let's see here, let's just say 450 for easy math, half of that is 225, 450, 550, 650, about 725. That weapon is somewhere, more realistically, around 700 or more every swing you do. So guys, you can kill a Lionel just mind-blowingly fast. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go try to find my white maimed Lionel from a few videos ago. Uh, as soon as we have a Blood Moon, that is. I haven't had a Blood Moon yet. But as soon as we get that Blood Moon, guys, we're going to go kill another Lionel. Alright folks, so map overview of where to find material. So if you've been following along with my walkthrough and you're still short on Luminous Stones, go ahead and Retrace our steps. So first we went over here and got the barbarian armor and there's a bunch of luminous stones outside the cave entrance and there's a bunch of luminous stones on the inside of that cave. Next place I went was Hyrule Castle. Don't forget the Royal Hidden Passage. You have to get in there a little ways to get to them but there's going to be a big cavern that opens up with quite a few luminous stones in there as well. And then guys where it's really at is down here in the Floria region. There are tons and tons of luminous stones in these three caves. Now these three caves correspond to the three brothers or whatever, the three Hanoks. So in each cave there's going to be Hanoks and they're going to be guarding the luminous stones unfortunately. But it is worth your, your effort to go through there and collect what you can. Uh, not only that, pretty much every other cave we've been in has, you know, one or two luminous stone nodes in it also. Okay, so in addition to all those caves, right here, guys, this island is a Luminous Stone Island. 
And all the stuff that I'm pointing out responds in time. So that's why I say if you haven't quite gotten yourself over the finish line yet, just go back, retrace our steps, and you'll be right as rain. Okay, you can also find mighty thistles, guys. They're all around here. You'll see them pretty much all over the place. Pretty much if you're going to go, you know, go cave bouncing here, you'll see the mighty thistles along the way as well. So as far as moblin guts go, I like to go here to the castle. Yeah, we're going to ignore that. Uh, here at the castle, look south when you emerge. And uh, you'll see a bad boy nest of three black moblins there. So save the game. Go on in there at night if you want. Sneak strike them all. But the reason I say save the game, if you don't get at least two or three guts, go ahead and reload that save and try again. There's also one more black moblin that I know of anyway, right there next to Princess Zelda's study, where those stairs kind of meet that flat spot. There's also a blue lizzle there, so be aware of that. What other materials did we need here? Oh, the blue flower stuff. The nightshade. You can find a couple over here. That's not right. Um, get my bearings here. I think this one. There's a couple of flowers there. On the way to Kakriko Village, there is a couple of flowers off to the side here. On top of this mountain right here. So East Hill is what you're looking for. And it might be a bit of a climb, especially in the rain, but it's worth it. There's quite a lot of those flowers up there. Oh, fireflies. So if you're short on fireflies, right around 10 p.m., give or take, you know, you might want to start early, 9, and sometimes they spawn a little later, like 11. Uh, but anywhere, literally, where there's just normal trees. Now, the rainforest, I don't recall seeing them there in abundance. Not to say that they'll never spawn there. But where I like to farm is Great Sky Island. A uh, couple of dense forest areas here where they really like to spawn in. And in addition to the evening hours, also in the morning. So right around 3 a.m. So every night you get two shots at finding fireflies. So again, wherever you see the trees, guys, that's all good, lush, fertile area for fireflies. I actually find quite a lot right under this shrine also. Down on the ground level, I'm pretty particular to this patch of trees and this patch of trees. Uh, unfortunately, this one has kind of, you know, some trouble. There's bears there and stuff, so, um, you know, a lot of times those will get scared away. But, you know, right around here, I find pretty good luck. And then one more spot, which I don't think I have the map for yet. I do not. But you can also check here and across the river from here. There should be a stable over there somewhere. And again, I have good luck over there also. I think we covered it all. All right, folks. If you enjoyed the information I gave you just now, please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Until the next time, best of luck and happy hunting.